So um, initially, I labeled this uh, course um, the medicine wheel. And before I drove up last week, my ancestors came to me and they said that they wanted me to rename it to the sacred stone circle because of a number of reasons. Um, the sacred stone circle, which I am a caretaker of on my property down in East Freetown, Massachusetts, is not just a native teaching, but it is a teaching that is ancient beyond the European continents is what I was told from my ancestors. So the wording, the sacred stone circle is a much more appropriate title for this talk that I'm going to give you today that was channeled to me. Um, also being very aware that I am um, Native American and white, so I'm a bridge for two worlds. I am uh, Blackfoot, uh, Wilstokwe, Mi'kmaq, French Canadian, and Italian. And in our tradition, uh, my Blackfoot tradition, we introduce ourselves in our native names. So I'm going to say to you, okay, Nitsikwa, Nitaniko, Mikutsigai, Opopokaki, so that you know who I am as I stand before you. So my intention here today is one, to create a sacred space so that you know what that feels like, so that you know when you're not in one, when to leave. And when you're in one, I want you to feel safe, right? So creating a sacred stone wheel is about creating a safe space for yourselves to pray, to commune with your ancestors, to get your answers from within, and to pray to your creator, right? So I'm going to start, and I'm going to only, I still, I brought my flute because to, for me, this is the easiest way for me to create a sacred space without having to smudge the room, without having to create any kind of a barrier. The, the sounds of the flute um, do this for me. And I was told when I first learned how to use this flute that I was only to use it to pray. I don't use it to entertain. And I only play the sacred songs that are um, that I've been given and taught that were my own. You know, there's some that I do do play that I um, when called to. Uh, but it's a prayer. It's a it's another way of praying. And so, if I achieve anything today for you, it's so that you have additional tools that you can use to fulfill your own purposes, to find your own way. So you don't need any other guidance system. You all need your own guidance system, but you need to feel safe to do that. Does that make sense, right? Yeah. So let us begin. Are we ready? OK. And you let me know if you can't hear it. You might have to adjust, right?
I'm small in my home with that glassy apron. You feel the energy in the room shift? This, I wanted you to feel this. This is what is important. This feeling, this feeling of peace, whether you're in a room, whether you're in nature, it's this feeling of connection to the unseen world. Because we're connected. We're not alone. We are never alone, ever. And if you can feel the sense of peace, that's your validation, right? So how many of you know what a stone circle or a medicine wheel is? Can you raise your hands for a minute? All right. And how many of you have one and you work with it? Okay. So a stone circle, if set in the right way and set in a sacred manner, um, will build an energy as you use it. If you just set yourself four sacred stones and you put them in your garden and you never go in and use it, it's not going to do a thing for you. It might like make your plants happy, but. <laughs> Somehow my podium has disappeared. <laughs> oh, I know, but I can't see behind me. <laughs> Thank you, Sage. <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right. So I'm actually going to skip down to what a sacred circle is not. Um, you know, I did create a a stone circle out on the lawn, um, is it north of the labyrinth, probably on the next green over. Um, and we had a workshop on Thursday and the wheel was created. Uh, I was coming in unaware of the, the lands here and I brought a sculpture of mine to hold the energy of the center and we created this sacred wheel in the grass you're welcome to go use it as long as you enter in the east and walk in a clockwise fashion i have to tell you the center stone was taken So the sculpture is no longer there. So I went and um, had my ancestors encircle it. And they said, now that the center space is open, when you go, they want you to pray in the center. Okay, so instead of going and, and finding a spot in the directions, just go and stand in the center and hold that energy as you pray. Everything happens for a reason. We have to learn to be flexible when dealing with spirit. So they always have a teaching in everything that happens. All right. So we just pray that the blessings go with that sculpture and whoever has it now learns something. Yeah. Yes. The circle, do you know where the labyrinth is on the green on the side of the hub up and behind? If you talk to Sandy at the, um, yeah, they'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. So a sacred circle is always created for a purpose. And you're dowsers, so you can douse for your location, or you can dream for your location or you can listen to your ancestors for your location. So when I met my husband and I had to dismantle the wheel at my home 14 years ago and move to his family's farm from the 1700s, it took me 
a while to get acclimated with the land, to get to know the ancestors of that land. And I kept looking for where the new wheel was going. And um, a dowser I'm not. <laughs> I'm ancestrally guided. My ancestors guide me. So I was told in a dream to look for a lady slipper in the spring. Now, in the two years I had been at that farm, never saw a lady slipper, never, couldn't find one anywhere. Um, so I was kind of dumbfounded as to, well, where is this going to be, right? Um, of course, one day, my walk around the farm, I was um, guided into a place in the woods I had not traveled. And lo and behold, at the base of a pine tree was a single lady slipper. So I followed the path past the lady slipper and it opened up to a round clearing and the, and the trees there created a natural circle. And I was told you have found it. So over the years, stones, so, the, so immediately once I set the four stones, in each of the cardinal directions in the center stone. I will tell you the rock world love stone circles and they will start coming out of the ground. So every day that I walk to the path to go to this wheel, I'm telling you stones that were not there the day before came out of the ground. I, the farm I have found over the years is over some quartz quarry. I did not know this. I was given an elder name to carry that I have to pass over when I'm older called Crystal Cave Bear Woman. And it came to me after I moved to this land. So every time I would walk, I would have a new, uh, more than one stone show up and they weren't small so i either had to roll them <laughs> or carry them <laughs> and eventually a wheel full wheel was created every aspect of the wheel was encircled on the outside each of the directions had the the stones coming from the center to to create a medicine wheel cross and then the center point this center stone came in a funny way around Easter in five, like, so this took some time. I think this was like five years later. This is not something you just, it, it, it evolves. So my whole point is here is that it evolves. So I was walking, we have a cranberry bog and I was walking on the side of kind of, there's a bank there. And I look up and I see this sheet of white quartz on the top of the hill that I'd never seen before. And I scurried up there and I'm like, where'd you come from? <laughs> this quartz stone had to be, it was huge. And it said, I want to be in your middle of your wheel. <laughs> and I went, well, I don't have the gift of levitation anymore. So what are we going to do here? <laughs> It was very muddy because it was muddy season. I pushed it down and rolled it softly down to the bank and called my husband. And he came with the tractor, put it in the tractor. We brought it to the back of the wheel. And my husband somehow lifted this thing and carried it into the wheel. So it became, you know, it, it became somehow, I, I don't know how he did it. He's a strong man, but he, it just lifted it up and he took it in. So he was helped by the spirits. And so then this, the wheel was set, right? So my whole point of this story is when you're guided, you'll be guided, you know? The stone wheel has been used in so many cultures. The Druids used it, the ancients used it. They used it in the Essene community. They used it in Lemuria. They used it in Atlantis. It has, it, it, you, it's underwater, it's, and it's on, you know, it's on sacred sites everywhere over the Americas and Turtle Island, you know, from four, you know, five stones to these incredible wheels like you see at Bighorn, right? So 
there's always a deeper meaning behind your wheel. It is a personal thing. It's a personal and it is a responsibility. You have to, if you're going to have one, you need to use it. Or the spirits will have you dismantle it or it will be dismantled for you. You know, this is not something that is just like a garden ornament. And I'm going to say that I have to, um, I have to walk very carefully between my native teachings and what I teach you because um, there's, there's just no way to teach hundreds of years of tradition when it's not your culture. And I could just say it's appropriation, but that's not the reason. The reason is you, you want to, you need to know the why of, of why you're going to do this and why you're going to have it. A lot of us have been Native in other lifetimes. A lot of us feel um, a calling to go back to the old ways. But it has to be done in a responsible way. And it has to be done with respect to the ancestors, even your ancestors from those other lifetimes. If they are calling you to this, they will guide you. And it would be for your healing and theirs. Do you see how personal this journey is? All right. So it should only be used, obviously, for good <laughs> and for the light because you're creating a vortex, right? We want to create um, healing and love vibration for humanity, for healing, for the planet. This is actually a relationship with our earth to have a wheel. It is a relationship with the elementals and the fairy realm that runs in a parallel to us because they have been um, caring for the earth um, as we have been destroying it. They have been trying to pick up the pieces now for generations, right? And a lot of them are not too happy with us, but when they see you as a light worker and they see you trying, they will first test you and then they will support you. Depending on which lands you're on, depending on what beings are there and what elementals are there. Because in the mountains of Canada, you're gonna have different elementals than on the Cape in, in, or in Rhode Island or somewhere in, in Maine or New Hampshire. You know, you have to sit with the land Give, offer your tobacco or your prayers or your sage, whatever you feel in your heart, to whatever place that you are called to, and then ask permission. And then see why. Ask why. You're all dowsers. Use those, use those lovely tools that you have. Ask. You might be two feet off, or you might have to... Um, just do some self-examination as to why you feel called to do this. Just so you're clear, you know, just so you're clear. And the biggest thing is you don't ever want fear involved in this. No fear. You can't be afraid of the unseen world. The only reason that there's any fear at all with that which you can't see is because of a lack of understanding and a lack of education. So, Sage, okay. Um, all right, let me take a breath. <laughs> Hold on a minute. All right, what I would like to do is, I'm getting called to do this right now, is create a circle. Um, would every, is everybody able to stand up and um, just, they don't have to stand right next to each other, but can we create a circle around the room? And just stand where you feel called to stand.
Oh, can I just take yeah, this? Take it right off. All right. Do we know which way is east? <laughs> Does everybody have a north is this way? North is this way? North. Okay. East. East is here. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna pray how I pray when I go into my wheel and give you um, kind of a understanding of this, right? Um, so we always start in the east, right? We always do clockwise mo motion. So we enter into the east and we always do clockwise motion. Now, anybody who took the pyramid class yesterday, there was some big clarity about that. <laughs> And it was wonderful. Yeah, it's okay. Let's work it. North, yep, we're good. All right. So before we do anything, we address Creator. And we invite Creator to join us in hearing our prayers in the ceremony. Hear our prayers, those said and unsaid. Then I, I touch the earth and I say, Mother Earth, I pray for your healing. I pray for all those to walk upon you, two-legged, four-legged, beings we know about, beings we don't know about, those that live above and below your soil, in your water and your air, and for the fairy realm that takes care of you, we pray. Please join us in ceremony. Spirits of the East. Now, I'm cross-cultural, so we're going to go. Spirits of the East. Eagle. Rainbow Warrior. Jesus, we honor you in this direction. We thank you for your blessings, your teachings, your gifts of strength, forgiveness, and unconditional love. Please join us in ceremony this day. Then we go to the south, and we ask the spirits of the south the deer, the mouse. I'm going to say, we call her Death Mother, who teaches us about transitions, right? And the Holy Spirit, I honor you in this direction. I thank you for your blessings, your teachings, your gifts of empathy, compassion and courage, courage to face things in our lives like change, courage to face transitions, and to know that we're safe. Right? Please join us in ceremony. Spirits of the West, my bear, the thunder beings that strike in our life when there's time for a change. And this is the place that I put, we call her crazy mother, who spins us in chaos until we learn to stand in the center and hold our grounding energy so that we do not get caught up in the chaos of our lives. This is a place of dreaming. I call in the angels and archangels in this direction. I thank them for fo looking over me and my loved ones and my family and the land and I ask them to come in and pray with us this day. And then the spirits of the north are our ancestors, those that have come before us, all the white sacred animals, white buffalo, white deer, white wolf, and all of those sacred animals that come and give us a message for our prayers of our grandmothers and grandfathers who have prayed for us and prayed and I also align my prayers for peace with the Holy Mother, Mary, in this direction, because our world needs peace. Our ancestors and our lineages seek peace. So let me ask them to come and pray with us this day. All right? And then I reach out to all of my ancestors, and I'm going to ask that all of you ask your ancestors internally to join us here this day 
all of your loved ones on the other side that you want them to join and stand with you and join and just so that they you can feel their love and know that they're here with you and know that you're never alone you can always talk to them you just feel the wheel now this is the purpose of a stone circle this is the purpose of a medicine wheel it is for your healing it is for your journey inward it is a place for you to pray where you're not alone and it vibrates out like a ripple effect out into the world you create a vortex of love and light when you have a medicine wheel or a stone circle the stones will get stronger in vibration your intention will build like a crescendo the elementals will join you when you are of pure heart and integrity they will see you they will know you and then you will know them and the teachings and the learnings that come from being in your wheel are incredible you will never get more than you can handle you will always be guided one step at a time you do not need to go zero to 60. <laughs> there is no quick path on the sacred road you are where you are you only need to be in the present moment and you need to stand and just take the next step that you're guided to okay so now that we're here would you guys all like to do a simple journey yeah you nodding yeah okay I'm gonna just do a simple one don't have my drum <laughs> gonna talk you through it we're just gonna do a little bit but anytime that you're journeying anytime that you want to go inward I needed you to feel this I needed you to know this this place where the seen and the unseen come together this place that feels sacred and safe where you can feel love and you can feel creator because creator lives in us it's not something outside of us this is what the inward journey is right and just so that you know the unseen world has natural laws the same way as nat nature has so it's only things that you don't understand yet just not yet if you're afraid of something find out about it because you know you put a seed in the ground it goes dark for a while you don't if you didn't know that that seed needed to nurture to grow up and become a plant it could be really scary at all those stages eh so the same thing with the unseen world there is there is natural laws of things there really isn't anything to be afraid of you know you're not playing with anything dark you're actually protecting yourself from anything dark when you're doing these practices does that make sense yeah does everybody feel comfortable as if anybody does not feel comfortable in this room I'm not gonna go further with this right everybody's good okay close your eyes <laughs> now I'm not gonna tell you where to go I'm not gonna say you need to go somewhere but I'm gonna say see where you are where do you picture yourself what place in nature in the stars are you just in the dark and you see lights it doesn't matter everywhere when you close your eyes in your mind's eye that you find yourself is fine is perfect for you right now in this moment on this stage make sense okay so you find yourself somewhere you see how you feel emotionally in this place does somebody come to greet you do you see colors 
Do you see lights? Are you flying? Are you underground? I'm going to sing a little bit. I hope you're okay with that. And I want you guys just to see where you go. And when you come out, just take a minute to write it down because it's all going to be important. Okay? Niska a bone we netch a bone we netch me ma do we hi we hi we we ha we hi we 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 ha we hi we we hi we ha we hi we hi we hi we we hi we hi we a bon we nej a bon we nej me ma ju we hi we are we we how we hi are we we how we hi are we we hi we how we hi we hi we hi we we hi we heal knees come a bone we nej a bone we nej me ma ju we we hi we heal we we ha we hi heal we we ha we hi heal we we hi we ha we hi we hi we hi we we hi we heal Nis kam a bon we nej a bon we nej me ma ju you we hi a we a heal we we ha we hi a heal we we ha we hi a heal we we hi we ha we hi we hi a we hi a we we hi a we a heal. Walalan walalan iskam walalan nogma walalan jijahamish walalan gajanu walalan gajanu. Oh, slowly come back. When you're ready, open your eyes. So Niskam in Migama Niskams means creator. So we're basically calling creator to hear our prayers with that song. That's what I was singing. Eh? And that's the first time I've ever done that in public. <laughs> you never quite know what you're going to do when you start these things. <laughs> so everybody take a deep breath. Take in all the messages that you ask God. Mm. My ancestors want to bless you all for being here today and being present. They welcome you. And when I say walalin, walalin in my language means thank you. So walalin nogama means, or walalin niska means thank you, creator. Walalin nogama means thank you, all my relatives. Like, it's a very similar to matakwias, eh? Nogama Jijahamich means thank you to the spirits. And Nogama Gijanu is thank you, um, Mother God. And Nogama Gijanu is thank you, Father God. 
So we want to thank all the ancestors who joined us in ceremony. We want to thank all your guides and angels that brought you here today for this place on your path, this sacred step you're taking today, right? We thank you for joining us in ceremony. We thank um, all our relatives and friends on the other side. We thank them for the little signs that they give us that we're not alone, right? I want to thank the spirits of the East for joining us in ceremony. I want to thank the spirits of the South for joining us in ceremony. I want to thank the spirits of the West for joining us in ceremony. And I want to thank the spirits of the North for joining us in ceremony. Thank you, you can sit down. All right, so sit down and um, take a few notes, if you would, just so that you don't forget. that. I think that was important, important for a lot of you. Um, And as we're doing that, does anybody have any questions so far? Yes. I can't hear you any. Yep. So. I do use my wheel all year long. Uh, I do use it less in the winter. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I have a sacred place in my home when I can't get out to my wheel that I pray. And I connect to the energy of my wheel. So that's possibility, you know. The other thing they're nudging me to mention to you is it's very, very interesting that over the 14 years of me living now on this land, every single time that has been a storm, windstorm, snowstorm, huge storm where trees have fallen, the trees have fallen around my wheel. Every single one that fell near the wheel followed, followed around the wheel and created a protection, including the huge pine that initially showed me the way. And, it, and I think that has to do with the acceptance of the elementals and the trees and it's some agreement that I is beyond my understanding, right? But it, you know, you'll find validation as you walk this path along the way, things that you would never b believe would be true that were magical, they will show you their truth if you're willing to see it. It could be as small as um, a feather walking out of your wheel when you needed validation that they heard you, you know? Any other questions? All right, I'll let everybody finish writing for a minute. Uh, I do add crystals. Um, in a lot of our native traditions, we don't use crystals. But in the stones themselves, the ancient stones, um, they, they really want to have a voice and their vibration is strong. I would say you can add them as you feel called for your own purposes. I think what you know, from what I understand in the mineral world, you use the different minerals for whatever healing that you need at the time. So I find that if I'm putting rose quartz in the wheel for some reason, there's some heart work that needs to be done. You know, I've I've had lots of crystals in the wheel, and then I've been told to take all my sculptures out because I make um, I make crystal stone sculptures for healing, 
and they all have a special message. So if I've ever used any of them in the wheel, sometimes I've brought them for the center or for a certain direction. Eventually when that healing is done, I'm told to take them out, you know? And a lot of times you have to be careful with the amount of energy. You have to kind of regulate the amount of energy that you've got going. You don't just want to keep going and going and going until you can't manage it. It needs to be managed. And you'll know that intuitively, and you'll know that as dowsers, right? You have a great tool to check all these things. When I'm teaching this to people that are not dowsers, I can't say that, <laughs> right? Yeah. Wait a minute, I'll ask Jane. Jane, how much time do I have? 15? Okay. All right. All right. All right. We got plenty of time. Okay. So you see that I have, um, I've created this image of a wheel, this is actually um, made up of some of my block prints that I print on my t-shirts. But I put the spiral in the middle because that is what you're doing. You're spiraling, you're spiraling the energy. So we, we have an understanding about the spiral path in the native traditions is that you're spiraling, you know, and I think it's on a lot of traditions. I don't think it's just our tradition. You travel in a spiral path up, right? And when you have come here to have something to learn or to have some trauma healed in your lineage, whatever it is, the thing that you've come here to deal with in this incarnation, you're going to be kind of tested along the way to see, did you learn it yet? So a lot of times we get hit with this stuff when we're really young and we start early on this path in our 20s and we have something we have to deal with, some trauma or some abuse or something, even if it's self, you know, some self thing. And as we come around on the wheel and we have to deal with this thing, we get the help we need at the time. And we have an opportunity to heal that thing, whatever it is. And then we get to move along because everything is a cycle. You don't have to stay in it. You move along in the energies and you spiral up. You go all the way around the wheel till you hit it again, just at that point. And don't be surprised here when you get a second test. It won't be as intense as the first test. It's always a little less if you've learned your lesson. All right, so we've all heard about the people that um, when they're in an abusive relationship, and myself included, I've, I've run into this too, you, you escape one situation for a worse situation. You escape another situation for an even worse situation because you're not healing what needs to be healed in you. And your circumstances are trying, your soul is trying to force you to learn whatever this is that you need to learn, right? You know, it, it doesn't have to be totally traumatic, but it, you know, it could be something that somebody else would consider minor, but you're gonna get it in extreme, you know, and then if you learn, if you, if you look at it with a different perspective, right? The next time you come around and you hit that place on the wheel and you get that lesson and you go, aha, I saw you coming. <laughs> I'm ready for you. <laughs> you might, you're gonna be good, right? Well, don't think that's the end of it because you gotta go up again. And then by the time it's gonna, you know, by the time you hit up here, you'll be like, oh yeah, shh, I got that done. And you might get another one. <laughs> but that's how that's how the energies seem to work with our with our contracts and things. The other thing I want to share um, 
is me as an artist. And then I'm, you know, this could work for a different, a bunch of different things that you're interested in. But me as an artist, my life in the seasons seem to work with in a, in a clockwise wheel format with what I feel called to create in the moment. So in the summer, I am painting oceans. Um, and I, I'm on the beach, I've got my acrylics, I'm painting. Then in the fall, for some reason, I am printing t-shirts or I'm making jewelry. Like, like it seems to me that I actually can map out what artwork I'm doing in my own pattern every single year. And it took a number of years for me to notice this. Like every time around Christmas, I pull all my beading out. Every single time in the, in the, in the, like just after Christmas, I start something new, right? And it seems it follows the pattern of the wheel. So once you have a stone circle, it becomes a metaphor for your life in a lot of ways. It could be like the number of rocks you have in a circle, which I have a lot. So maybe that's why I do a lot of things, <laughs> right? You know, there's certain times of the year that I travel where I ha we have our ceremonies that happens every year. The holidays happen at certain points every year. So all of that stuff comes in a wheel format, right? And can be tracked in a stone circle and a medicine wheel. And you can kind of use that as an inward um, way to guide your inward journey. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Is this all making sense? Oh, yes. Yeah, we could talk about that. So um, I always find the center of the wheel first, right? And um, it can become, I, I was telling them that you can do it through dowsing, you can do it through uh, guidance through your dreams, guidance from your ancestors if you hear the other side. Um, sometimes the natural world will guide you there too. You know, sometimes don't, the, what I would say is to stay open to how you will find the place. But once you set the stone and once you set the circle, it becomes a responsibility. It is, so you set the center stone and then you find the cardinal directions, right? And I always set the east stone first because that's where you always should enter your wheel unless you're told otherwise. I have a wheel that I enter in the west because um, my medicine is the bear. Yeah? You can. You can, you can have, you know, you, all right, so let me finish. So you, you set the first stone in the east and then you can secondly do it in clockwise fashion. And always once those four stones on the outside to the north are all set, you always walk in a clockwise fashion. You walk in the east and you go clockwise. Even, you know, you put your stuff down, you're gonna pray here and you forgot something, you go around. You know, so once that wheel is set, it doesn't matter how big it is, it, that's a personal preference. So I've even told people, well, this, you know, in suburbia, people need grounding really extremely. And so I, I often tell people that are desiring to have a stone circle, if they can put, this is where the garden could, could happen, right? if they want to use it just for for grounding, right? Um, I would suggest if you're going to use it for he, big prayer, it, it be in a more private place. Um, or you can create, no, you don't agree?
in town. They call her and they talk to her. She's Jewish, but they make her into So what she's saying is, so she, you had the tree, yes. and it was saying that's where it was, and it was in a beside the tree. Beside the tree. You had no choice. That's where it was supposed to go. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, if they tell you that, they tell you that. And and in our West, they have no trees around them because there's no trees. You know, um, been hiking out there and just come upon medicine wheels in the stones. You know, so you, and uh, you're called to put them where you're supposed to, right? Um, and this is why I try not to like give you any rules. <laughs> But what I, I tell a lot of the women that are, that are not dowsers and they just need a little bit of grounding or, you know, the gentleman, and they, they're rushing to work and they need to, the best thing that you can do is take a breath in the morning. And if you can stand even in a small stone circle for a minute, you're going to have a better day because you're going to go in centered and grounded. And basically... You're just starting a practice. This just becomes a practice. It part, you know, it just expands whatever meditation practice you're already doing, and amplifies it. The stones amplify. You know, whatever you're doing, and so whatever your pure heart intention is, it's just going to ripple out into the world in a bigger way, which is what we all want, right? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yep. Yep. Oh. Yeah, you really can't have a private wheel that that can't stay solid. I mean, you can always set up. People set up circles in their homes, but this is where your crystals could work. You know, yeah. You'd have to find a different, a different way or a different practice. You know, this is just one way, and this is. I mean, this to have a stone wheel. Every stone wheel you know about is in nature, isn't it? You know, every because this is about connecting you to the earth. You know. There's a ton of meditation practices. There's a ton of ways you can go inward. This is just one. And it's not the end all be all um, for your practice. You don't have to have a medicine wheel. You don't have to have a stone circle to talk to God. I mean, it's just a tool that if you're called to it is a responsibility. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and you might, be like her where once you start everybody feels the vibration and they all show up right <laughs> that depends on how connected you are <laughs> right so any other questions is everybody feeling like they're getting complete information here am i missing anything that you want to know about that's all right i'm happy for the questions go I had to dismantle my wheel. Yes, good question. Very good question. Oh, yes. <laughs> so there are, all right, I'm being, I'm being guided to tell you. So there are circumstances where we leave stone circles. When I lived up in Maine um, in my early 30s, I went on a traditional vision quest and I created a sacred stone circle that I did ceremony in for four days for vision, right? It's a practice in our culture. Um, oftentimes when we do that, we dismantle it and we put the stones back. 
I, in this particular instance, was on a place called Seven Star Hill, and I was told to bury them. Um, I also was, t I was, so I was up in Maine, I think it was Indigenous Peoples Weekend when I did it, so it was very cold. And I was very young and naive. <laughs> Of course, thought nothing happened when a lot happened. Um, and uh, I was told I had to go back there probably a week or two later. Actually, I think it was a week later. I have to look at my notes. Um, and there was a, a bit of a ice and snowstorm in between. And I went back. I don't know why I'm sharing this, but they're telling me to. So I went back to the place of the wheel and where I had sat and prayed all those days, there was a huge bear print frozen in the ground. And so they had me go up there so they would validate um, my journey and my path, you know, you know. And um, yeah, because I grew up Christian, so it, it was, it's a long story, there's a book. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yes. So did you did you bury the circle? So I left for that particular one. I was told to bury the stones beneath the earth where they were. And they were quite large, so it was a feat. It wasn't like usually it's usually when you're dealing with stones, you get very strong. And it's, then you get very dirty, yeah, <laughs> from the earth. Um, so let me skip back then to um, when I had to move. So my, my first wheel was near a river at my house that I had bought myself. I had this beautiful stream in the back. And they, my ancestors had me create a medicine wheel there. And we had a huge honoring. And my native friends came from miles and was lovely. And when I had to dismantle it um, to move, it was really hard. It's not going to be easy because you put all your heart and soul and energy into that. And so as you place the wheel in ceremony, the same you dismantle the wheel in ceremony, right? Um, some of those, ro those rocks did not want to come from that property. So I did not take them. I did probably, I can't remember now, but I might have had a crystal sculpture or two that I kept and, and, and took, actually. The one that was stolen out of the wheel here was one of them, they're telling me, yep. I had that there in that wheel. It was time for it to go. So there's a letting go process when you have to basically the wheel is a teaching tool for you. And it's teaching you how to grow in your walk with spirit and God. And, you know, I had outgrown that wheel, really. I had gone the next level. And it was time to take it apart, to thank, you thank all the stones, you thank the earth, you smudge, you you thank the elementals and you go for your dowsing or your inner guidance, however you do, and you put them where they want to be next. I had a little stream and a river. It was very easy to find where they wanted to go. They wanted to be cleansed again by the river, right? And that was just, you know, a lot of the stuff happens when it's happening in a sacred manner. You're, and when you're kind of on the other side, your memory of it goes. Because you're really, when you're guided in the moment, you know, when I'm channeling, I don't remember a single thing I say. I won't remember this talk. <laughs> I'll remember parts, but, um, you know, yes. Ah, the tree was dying. 
You didn't want to move. You had to dismantle and move. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, I went kicking and screaming too. But, you know, <laughs> we couldn't have two houses. <laughs> Do you have a question? Are you good? How's everybody feel? Oh, yes? No? I haven't. I haven't been called to do that yet. Yeah. You have. Cherokee. Cherokee. Yeah. Okay. Burning the virgin down to the earth for healing. But Cherokee also has a 13 wheel. Really? For women only. Oh, Men 13 to five. Moons. 13 moons, eh? Yeah. yeah. That's moon medicine that I still have to learn, actually. <laughs> We're never done. Can I tell you guys this? We're never done. <laughs> We're never done learning. <laughs> We're never finished in our wheels, or we're build, building. So uh, that's leading us to the next wheel, I guess. How much more time do we have? Ten minutes? Okay, good. This is good. So COVID happened. <laughs> and for the first time in 23 years, I couldn't go to Canada for my ceremonies. And I was having this crazy fit about that, <laughs> calling my chiefs. I couldn't go to either. I couldn't go to Alberta to my Blackfoot ceremonies. I couldn't go to El Sabuktuk for that ceremony. I was like, okay. So my ancestors told me to take my wheel in the back and turn it into a ceremonial place. So I talked to my Blackfoot chief and I aligned. All right, let me back up just as Tarad, because I learned this yesterday. <laughs> In 2019, I had to go, I had told my Blackfoot chief, who had been flying out to New Brunswick for our ceremonies for 20 something years, he, him knowing that I was part Blackfoot and part Mi'kmaq, I always said, when I finish my commitment here, I will travel out and come to your ceremonies. He's heard that a lot, and there's a lot of people that don't go. But my ancestors insisted. So I had this whole trip out to South Dakota in 2019, and I traveled from there to Alberta, Canada, to my home territory for the first time in seven generations. On my way there, my spirit grandfather told me I needed to go to the Big Horn Medicine Wheel on, in Wyoming, is that in Wyoming? It's on, it's on the way. <laughs> I thought if you were in New England and the roads were flat. <laughs> I had no idea that I was driving up and down mountains in a truck that had no power, really, rented. <laughs> and um, I left early in the morning and I got to the medicine wheel probably around five or six o'clock at night. And when I got there, all I saw was a dirt road going straight up and two-way traffic was trying to come up and down it. And I went, you want me to go up there? <laughs> they said, yes. I said, okay. <laughs> and so I mustered my courage and I'm alone, mind you, traveling in part of the country I've never been. I drove up the mountain to the top, and then I get up there, and it's like a park anywhere else. There's a pavement, there's families, there's cars. I'm like, oh, okay, I can do this. I'm good. There's a woman next to me putting her kids in the car, and I go, oh, where's the medicine wheel? Oh, she goes, oh, honey, it's a mile hike up that way. <laughs> And I went, what? <laughs> I had been driving all day. So I put my sneakers on, got my backpack, went up there. I got to the top of the 
wheel and I had a moment and um, I felt the connection and it was incredible and I walked since it's a tourist attraction and I wasn't part of the Cheyenne Reserve there I wasn't allowed in but I walked the wheel on the outside took photos of the scenery until a ranger came up to me and said put the camera away there's about us to be a ceremony in the middle of the wheel and I went what <laughs> I go I'm native I understand and he goes you are I said yeah he said okay you can stand here then and so I came and I stood as I prayed along with these elders who held ceremony there in the wheel and my ancestors had timed it perfectly that I wasn't 10 minutes early or 10 minutes late that I could stand there and be in ceremony in that wheel at Bighorn and then I learned yesterday take that connected energy to my ceremonies in my ancestral lands at the Kenai Blood Reserve in Alberta. Now, I had no idea what I was doing there or why, but I knew it was important. And when I was in ceremonies, my grandfather came to me and he said, welcome home. You're the first one to step foot on our ancestral's land since in seven generations. Then I went home and I brought that energy to my wheel. And I felt the connection between those two wheels. That's what that story was about. And how are we doing for time? Five minutes. So I had to figure out a way to do ceremonies I thought alone isolated in my wheel I went through preparations like I would any other time I was on the phone with my chief and his and his wife and we figured it out um, how we were just energetically prayerfully going to stay connected and I performed my ceremonies alone but not alone with my brothers and sisters in Alberta to the point where I could see them in formation. I saw where I was standing with them and I knew every single thing that was happening thousands of miles away. There was one point, I'm going to tell you this because it's funny, <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're dancing for days. We're tired and we have little breaks in between. And I had... Um, I my husband had set up a little hammock so I could sit down and rest my feet for a few minutes. And I, I would dance when they danced and I rested when they rested. And, uh, you know, there is a time where they get a longer break. And I sat down and I fell fast asleep. And I was on the outside of my wheel, but I was on the edge of it. And the next thing I know, I thought my husband was running through the woods saying, get up. It was my grandfather, and I saw him with jeans and a white shirt and his hair, and he's running to get me up because they were just about to get started, and I was fast asleep. And they wanted me to know I was really there. They wanted me to know I was not making this up. And so I physically saw him. That was the only time that ever happened. So when the ceremony ended, um, I was then told, I thought they wanted me to dismantle the wheel and I got really upset. Like, what? Would I do something wrong? No, they wanted me to take everything down and everything out because I had brought, those ceremonies had never been performed on that land in thousands of years, if ever, and had I continued working in that wheel at that moment, I would have punched a portal. And they said, take everything down, 
let it calm down and integrate. And in the meantime, you're going to build another wheel <laughs> so that you can invite others because now no one is no longer allowed here. This is now your sacred place and you cannot invite another. But you need to teach these ways. You need to make it a public place. And another stone circle with boulders the size of these chairs manifested in a week and a half on the edge of my property down by the parking lot. <laughs> Easy access. That's another story <laughs> because we're out of time, right? <laughs> so I'm down in East Freetown, Massachusetts. And if anybody wants to come visit the New Stone Circle, that's where it is. <laughs> Is everybody okay with all that information? Yep. So I'm gonna close with a prayer. I wanna thank my ancestors and guides and all of your ancestors and guides who've gathered this day to bring this information to you at this point on your journeys. May you take it and do good with it, bring love into the world and have that love and light ripple out to your inner circles, your outer circles, and to the greater planet. Thank you.